So let's start with a mixture of cerulean blue, French ultramarine blue, and a tiny bit of light red. And the first thing I'm going to do is put on some water. I'm not touching the bank at the back at the present time because the bank is still slightly wet. And if I touch that, the wash is going to bleed down into the water. So just adding some more water into the wash and making sure that that water gets lighter as it comes forward. So into that we're going to feed a few reflections. The first is going to be the lightest green reflection and that's a reflection for the bank and this green tree. Now you'll notice that when we paint the secondary wash into the wet wash that we have already on, it explodes into it and you get all of this diffusion within the wash itself. Again, whenever you're putting the reflections of the trees in, I want you to have a thicker mix for your secondary wash than you did have for your first wash. So I'm just going to thicken this mix slightly. Winds are yellow and winds are blue. And this is for the trees. I'm going to put a tiny bit of light red into that just to give an earthy green for this reflection. And by using vertical brush strokes, you can see there how that wash is bleeding. But it's very important that we use vertical brush strokes because this shows the direction in which the trees are growing. And if there's a dome top to the tree, we'll have a dome top to the reflection. Now this tree is a lot darker, so we'll have to mix up a darker reflection. Dark tree, dark reflection, light tree, light reflection. And that is a mixture of French ultramarine, light red, and Windsor yellow. And that should give us a dark green. There we go. So I'm going to sh show the shape of the little conifer. Now remember that the wash will bleed to about twice the size of the stroke you put on. So if you put on a stroke an inch wide, it'll bleed to about two inches. So I'm just being very, very careful that I don't overdo the shape of the conifer because the wash being wet will allow that to take on its own shape. The reflection will always be a slight diffused image of what's above. It's never going to be a mirror image, or it's better not to be anyway. Now, this is very blue-green for this tree, so I'm putting that in. And now there's a lot of trees in the background. And they're in the distance, so therefore they're going to be slightly blued. So I'm just getting the colour of ultramarine and light red to indicate that colour. And I feed that along here here and out to the right hand side. Now this tree is, there's more than a light green within that tree so therefore I'm going to mix up a secondary wash for that with winter yellow, winter blue and light red and we can put some secondary colours into that reflection. But it's very important that we do this while it's all wet. Once that water starts to dry we must leave it alone. So that's the biggest part of the reflections in. If we want to show some white flashes or light bouncing off the surface of the water, all we have to do is take the moisture out of the brush and we can show a few light areas on the surface of the water. But this will only show up whenever we paint it through a dark, a dark area of the paper. And whenever we have water lying flat like that, we're going to have quite a few ripples on the water. I'm just going to use a bigger brush for that. There. And you can see that that takes some of the paint off the paper to give you some ripples. So that's a very simple and effective way of painting reflections on water.